Welcome to the modifications to the carbohydrate ring module of the Carbohydrate Chemistry Stream of Resources. My name is Ryan Snetinsky, and I am Glyconet's Training and Project Management Coordinator. In this module, we will discuss ways of synthetically modifying monosaccharides. First, we will examine how the structure of carbohydrate molecules influences their reaction rate. Next, we will survey methods for modifying a carbohydrate ring and look at how these methods can be used for specific applications, including the preparation of glycosal donors. We'll begin with a few general comments on the nature of substitution reactions on carbohydrate rings. First, it is important to note that these substitutions take place via SN2 pathways. SN1 types of reactions are disfavored due to electron withdrawing groups on the ring. These electron withdrawing groups also slow down the reaction rate compared to cyclohexane. Next, it is a good idea to carry out substitutions at the monosaccharide stage whenever possible, rather than trying to carry out these reactions on disaccharides or larger molecules. Undesirable side reactions or cleavage of the glycosidic bond may result. Lastly, in terms of leaving groups, triflates generally give better results than tosylates and mesylates. The position of the leaving group being displaced will influence the speed of the reaction. For instance, Reactions at primary centers, such as carbon-6 in piranicides, usually proceed quickly in good yield. The major influence on reactions at this position is the substituent at carbon-4. Axially oriented groups at C4 will slow the reaction down due to steric clash with the incoming nucleophile. Other factors come into play at the secondary positions. Axial substituents are displaced more readily than equatorial substituents, but 1,3-diaxial attack is disfavored due to steric and dipole repulsion. Displacements at carbon-2 are slow, especially for axial-oriented glycosides. There are two reasons for this. First, it creates unfavorable steric interactions between the anomeric group and the departing leaving group. Second, positive charge buildup on carbon-2 is unfavorable, as carbon-1 already contains significant positive charge due to the electron withdrawing effects of the two oxygens attached to it. During substitutions, the ring must flatten to form the transition state, which may lead to eclipsing interactions among some substituents on pyranose rings. Furanose rings, by contrast, are much better able to accommodate this ring flattening, and therefore substitutions with pyranoses often proceed much more quickly than substitutions with pyranoses. When performing substitution reactions on sugars, side products may form, and we will highlight a couple of the more common ones here. First, ring contractions may occur if a good leaving group oriented equatorially at C2 is present. The ring oxygen will displace the group at C2 to generate a five-membered ring. Second, strongly basic nucleophiles can lead to eliminations. Rather than attacking, the nucleophile acts as a base to abstract a hydrogen from a carbon adjacent to a good leaving group. An alkene is then formed, eliminating the leaving group in the process. We will now move on to discuss methods for carrying out substitutions on monosaccharides. As mentioned previously, most substitution reactions carried out on sugars are SN2 processes, which result in an inversion of the stereochemistry. Triflate leaving groups tend to give the best yields, although mesylate and tosylate leaving groups are frequently encountered as well. The Mitsunobu reaction is another way of carrying out an SN2 displacement. This reaction works best at primary centers. 
If an amine is desired, thalamide is a particularly good nucleophile to use in this reaction. Ring modification methods other than displacements exist. We will highlight two commonly used precursors, glycals and epoxides. Glycals are extremely useful intermediates in carbohydrate synthesis. These sugars feature a double bond between carbon-1 and carbon-2 and are traditionally made by reacting glycosyl bromides with zinc in acetic acid. The zinc inserts into the carbon-bromine bond and then reductively eliminates, along with acetate, to form the alkene. Much like other alkenes, glycals can undergo many types of addition reactions. Glycals can be converted into epoxides using dimethyl dioxirane. Epoxides can also be made through the base catalyzed displacement of good leaving groups by adjacent trans oriented alcohols. Epoxides can be opened by a variety of nucleophiles, including halides, hydrides, azides, and alcohols. In pyranocides, epoxide opening is dictated by the first Plattner rule, which shows a preference for axial nucleophilic attack that maintains a near chair conformation in the transition state. In furanocides, the various steric and electronic effects that we have previously discussed contribute to the overall selectivity. We will now move into applications of the methods that we have just discussed. We will focus on three major modifications, fluorination, deoxygenation, and amination. Fluorinations are the most common type of halogenation, and fluorosugars are frequently prepared for medicinal and therapeutic applications. They can be prepared through the displacement of good leaving groups, such as triflates, mesylates, and tosylates, or through the opening of epoxides. Diethylamino sulfur trifluoride, or DAST for short, is a reagent that allows alcohols to be displaced by fluoride without prior activation. DAST is used extensively for the preparation of fluorosugars for this reason. Many natural products contain deoxysugars. Several methods for their preparation exist, and the method of choice depends upon the nature of the oxygen to be removed. Halides can be reduced by metal hydrides, radical reduction, or hydrogenation. Hydride reduction is more efficient for primary centers, while secondary centers are more easily reduced using radical reduction. Hydrogenations are most efficient with bromides and iodides. Metal hydrides will also reduce sulfonates, though the efficiency is greater with primary groups. Epoxide opening with hydrides is another option. Nitrogen-containing sugars, such as N-acetylglucosamine and sialic acid, are extremely important to a variety of biological processes, and a number of routes have been developed to produce both natural and non-natural amino sugars. For primary centers, a Mitsunobu reaction with thalamide followed by deprotection is a commonly used protocol. At secondary centers, azides can be installed by displacing sulfonates or opening epoxides. The azide can then be easily reduced to an amine using any number of reducing agents. The vast majority of naturally occurring amino sugars have an amine group at C2. A process called azetonitration, developed by Raymond Lemieux, treats a galactal with ceric ammonium nitrate and sodium azide to generate good yields of the galacto-oriented azide. When the galactal is exchanged for a glucal derivative, a one-to-one -one ratio of gluco and manno-oriented derivatives is obtained. It should be noted that this reaction poses an explosion risk and proper safety precautions should be put in place before attempting to carry it out. The last topic we will discuss is the preparation of donor sugars. These sugars are the electrophilic component in glycosylation reactions that attach two sugars together. 
we will discuss reactions involving donors in more detail in the glycosylation module. Glycosyl halides were the first types of donor sugars to be developed. Bromides have traditionally been used the most, while chlorides are also frequently encountered. Both of these donors can be made from peracetylated sugars and the corresponding protic or Lewis acid. Chlorides form the kinetic product first and do not anomerize. The alpha bromide anomers are the thermodynamic product and beta bromides will anomerize to the alpha anomer with prolonged reaction times. If the starting material contains an azide, titanium tetrabromide should be used instead of hydrobromic acid. Fluoride donors are the only type of halide donor that is hydrolytically stable. One common method of preparation is to react the protected reducing sugar with DAST. Thioglycosides, together with the trichloroacidimidates shown on the next slide, are the most common donors used today. Like glycosyl halides, they can also be prepared from peracetylated precursors. Typically, a thiol such as ethane thiol or thiophenol is attached to the donor using an electrophilic activator such as boron trifluoride diethyl etherate. If carbon-2 has an acetyl, benzoyl, or acetamide substituent, neighboring group participation will occur to yield a 1,2-trans thioglycoside. Anomerization will occur with prolonged reaction times. Trichloroacidimidates are prepared by reacting the reducing sugar with trichloroacetonitrile under basic conditions. Depending upon the base used, different anomers can be obtained. This brings us to the end of this module. You are now familiar with how the structures of monosaccharides influence their reactivity and have learned several methods for making modifications to the carbohydrate ring. The section on the preparation of donors will prove to be useful for the glycosylation module, which is the next video in this series.